Curtis Calhoun here with MMA News. My next guest has another big fight coming up. Bellator 302 is the return of Bellator. It's Sinead Kavanaugh joining me today. How's it going, Sinead? Hey, Curtis. All good. It's great to meet you. Great to chat with you. Uh, I just yeah. want to get your first thoughts. Obviously, uh, you know, this is a big rematch with Leah McCora. You got uh, the better of her in the first fight. Obviously, uh, a big fight for the division. Just kind of talk to us uh, a little bit about how this camp has been so far and uh, how pumped you are to get back in there. Yeah, this is it's going well. Um, started up in the game this week, you know, a few spurs and yeah, getting gritty now, you know. Um, I'm looking forward to this this rematch. Last time we fought was two years ago, and uh, yeah, it's it's all go. I want to ask you about a little bit about that because I feel like, and I've seen some of your other interviews recently. It, it seems like especially from her perspective, there's been a little bit of a, a shift to respect, right? Like there was, it was pretty cordial ahead of the first fight, but now this time it seems like she's, she's a little bit more vocal this time. And there's a little bit of animosity there. Can you talk to us a little bit about that in terms of why do you think that is? And, and what's your position on that? It's really because she lost the first one, you know? Um, yeah. And I think she's out for blood this time. And, I'm not going to sit in the corner and let her you know, talk bad about me and disrespect my name. So, yeah, like she should be proud. She should be like liking this rematch. You know, I won her on better on one leg, torn ACL, torn MCL, two sprains and still better at her own game. So, yeah, I think there's going to be blood spilled this time, you know. Do you feel like she's almost uh, somewhat distracted uh, with, you know, feeling that she's entitled for the title shot next and not really super motivated ahead of this rematch, which is, which is a little bit odd because obviously, you know, she lost the first fight between you two. Like, where do you feel like her mind is ahead of this fight? I don't know. I think she's going to be in the game here. Like, you know, um, she'd wanted to get the win over me, like, you know. Um, and I think this this win could lead to, like, for the um, potential fights, we have to, for the title, you know, do I think she's entitled for the title this time? I don't. She won. She lost against me. She lost against Kat Zingano. Um, and she bet Sarah McMahon was a great win, you know, but um, Sarah McMahon only, bet, only fought once in Bellator. So I don't think it, that was title contention. Like. That's how I feel, you know. Yeah, I totally understand. And I got to ask you, too, obviously, it's been uh, a couple of years since the first time the two of you fought. Mm -hmm. From your perspective, can you tell us a little bit about where you feel you are mentally, physically, emotionally compared to that first fight in terms of where you feel like you've improved the most? Um, I'm just, like, as I, I go into every fight the same, you know, um, it's, I just... You know, I'll steam ahead. I just want to put on performance, perform well, and I'll I'll get the win. You know, um, sorry, what? Can you just can, um repeat that question then? Oh sure, I was just asking uh, in terms of the mental and physical improvements that you feel like you've made from the first fight to this fight. Yeah, well then, yes, uh, I um I've shown in me the first fight, but it's like I was known as a boxer, like. Oh, I could just box, like, but I've shown that I can wrestle, I can grapple, and I can be absolutely vicious and violent on the ground, you know, so uh, on one leg. So, yeah, I've proven a lot of people wrong from the first fight. And I got I gained a lot of fans from the first fight, you know, that I was, I am an all-rounder fighter, fighter, like. Do you take pride in improving people wrong and and you know do you do you listen to the criticism from fans and all that stuff like does that motivate you? No, I'm not a clue chaser. I <laughs> I put all that behind me. I don't even look at uh, things anymore. You know, like because if you read into them, it's just gonna wreck your head and it'll make you sad. And like, yeah, I'm not all about that. Like, that's their opinion. Everyone has opinions. Like, you know, so let them have them. You know, I'm not. I'm not here, like, like to be a yes man and and let get everyone to like me because that's not what I'm about. Like, I'm here, here. I'm real, and I'm who I am. What was your initial reaction when you heard about the PFL Bellator merger? Like, was there a little bit of uh, 
you know, wondering what your future was going to be like in, in Bellator and what your next fight was going to look like? Like, kind of give us your initial reaction to when you heard the news. Absolutely. Like, I didn't know what was going to go on. Was it going to be kept? Was was Bellator going to be still a thing? Um, yeah, it was all up in the air. A lot of questions were being asked and no one had answers. Uh, for us, you know, a lot of fighters were left in the dark for a good while, like, you know. But I, I, was, I was kept on and one of the best in the world in that division, you know. And um, what an honor. Like, it's great. I'm so grateful to be kept on, you know, um, and to prove myself in that division I can get to fight other people and stuff, you know, uh, from PFL. It's uh, yeah, it's it's tasty, <laughs> you know, new blood. I want to ask you about that too, because obviously a lot of people are are looking at this first uh not really first Bellator event, but kind of the first Bellator event of the new era per se, right? In terms of the after the Bellator PFL merger. How much does it mean to you to really be a part of this first event in, in kind of this new chapter in Bellator, like how much does that mean to you to be a part of this? Actually, I didn't see it that way. That's a nice way to uh, to think about it. Yeah, that's the new fight on the new Bellator on the PFL, yeah, and I'm I'm on the go, man. That's, yeah, that's pretty nice to um to have that on, on a record, you know, that I can, when things end, like that I was in Belfast for the full show. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I want to ask you, too, obviously, a, a great thing about the PFL Bellator merger and, and being under one company is that you have so many options, right? Like, obviously, at the moment, it sounds like the PFL isn't going to have a women's 145 division in the season this year, but that could potentially change next year and beyond. Like, do you kind of see this as, you know, um, a great thing in terms of having so many different options in the PFL and Bellator and moving forward? Absolutely. I see that in the pipeline. I see that's gonna happen. We're gonna have the tournament. I want to be in I want to be in that tournament, you know. Uh chance of a million pounds that can absolutely change change your life for, for good, like you know. <laughs> um and yeah, like there's so many options in the PFL, which is amazing. Like Steve like up the game in MMA, I think, you know. Um and there's a lot of fighters there. They want to prove themselves with women, like, and it's one of the best divisions, 145 in Bellator. So, yeah, we, I look, we want to see the mix and want to see those PFL fighters. I want to see it all. Like, it's going to be great. And the great thing about the season format, too, is that, you know, you know who pretty much you're going to fight next, right? In terms of there's not really a lot of politics in terms of, you know, calling out a certain opponent or feeling like you have to earn your way to the title shot. Like, you feel like you have a clear path in the season format. Like, does that excite you? Is that something that you really want to be a part of? Absolutely. Like, you have a structure there. Like, you know, when you're fighting, the date set, all you have to do is train, win, and move forward. I'm abs like, I'm, I'd be buzzing for that if I get into it. Absolutely. And uh, I want to ask you a little bit about your last fight. I don't want to touch too much on the fight itself, but I, I saw in another interview, you spoke a little bit about um, some personal stuff you're going through in your family. And yeah. once again, I really want to apologize to you for your loss. And, and um, you know, I've, I've dealt with, with similar losses in my life as well. Um, but I want to ask you like, in terms of mentally and emotionally, like, where do you feel like you are ahead of this fight? Do you feel like you're in a good a good place compared to where you were during the last fight week in comparison? Yeah, like, where do you like, feel like you're at? I went like went all pear shaped for me last last fight last camp or last fight, like you know, um done dummy weeks training to you know, everything was going well, sparring well. Then fight week came, and my uncle committed suicide five days before me fight. Um and my brother found him. And yeah, so it was, it was, it wasn't, it wasn't a good time. Like, but I thought I would be mentally strong and and move ahead and go and fight. But I didn't walk out that way, you know. Um, I I crumbled, and I couldn't absolutely think for myself in the cage. I just was on autopilot, like you know. So this time going through, like like all that's gone. That's can't do it. That's over with now, you know. Let's move forward to another fight. 
and be mentally strong where I am, you know. No tragedies, no tragedies, please God, this time, you know. As a fighter, like, how important is that to, to have a clear mind ahead of a fight? Obviously, because as you mentioned in the last fight camp, you had so much going on behind the scenes. Like, how important is it for you and, and for fighters in general to really have that clear mind, to really be focused on the task at hand? That's the key. Like, the key is the mind. Like, you know, if, you have, if your mind is 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 fact <laughs> you're gonna be it's gonna show when your performance like and that was that was the you seen it with me you know it just it wasn't there like I had a lot on my on my mind like um you need a clear head to fight and I think that's the key happy okay. fighter is a dangerous one as they say no doubt about it and I gotta ask you too obviously um with a win in this rematch, where do you feel like you go from here in terms of the rest of 2024? Like, has the have the matchmakers talked to you about, you know, a potential title shot next? Have you even thought about that? Obviously, I know you're focused on this rematch, but where do you feel yeah. like you go from here? Well, I was told maybe a fight in March, um, a fight in um, this in March, fight in June in Dublin. That'd be two fights early this year. Hopefully one at the end would be the icing on the cake. If I fight after this fight, if if I win, or when I win, <laughs> um, yeah, title shot with Cyborg again. Like it's it's all like it's we don't know what's gonna happen. I'm I'm, I'm willing for anything to be thrown my way. As I said, I don't give up. There's no quit in KO. So uh, yeah, looking forward to what's next. And I gotta ask you too. Uh, Chris Cyborg has hinted at potentially. It's, it sounds like she's probably going to fight Larissa Pacheco next, potentially later this year. Um, obviously, that hasn't been confirmed yet. But it sounds like she maybe has one or two fights left before retirement. Now, if there was a scenario where, you know, you get the title shot, but it isn't against Chris Cyborg, say it's for a vacant title, like, do you feel like... Um, like, do you want it to be against Chris Cyborg in terms of, you know, for the title shot? Or do you feel like the title shot, whoever it's against, is still obviously a huge deal? Look, um, if, if, look if it was against Chris, I would like that rematch. Mm -hmm. But, like, if there's an easier path to take, yeah, and she fakes off and there's an easier path to take, I'm going to take that path to get that title. You know, I want to be world champion. And, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Chris Cyborg is like, she's she's like she's amazing. Like you know, she's the talent is is incredible. But yeah, like um, I would fight her, and I'm looking for and just to get me hands on that title, and it, I'll take anything my way. Absolutely. Well, Shanae, it was great to meet you. Great to chat with you. Uh, before we wrap things Thank up you. here, I want to give yeah. you uh, want to give you the platform to uh, shout out any sponsors you're working with. Uh, shout out your team. Any of that good stuff, I'll uh, give it the final word. Yeah, just the Black Forge and uh, Forge Irish. So they'll always look after me. And Connor, of course. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, Sinead, I appreciate the time. Thank you so much. I uh, can't wait to watch you fight, and uh, I'm sure we'll chat again soon. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks, Cordes.